Hello there, fellow mech warriors, and welcome back to a dose of the Battle Mechs of Battletech. Today's design is clannish in origin, but it does have an interesting story, particularly for a light mech. It is known as the Incubus, or as the Inner Sphere denizens know it, the Vixen. Which is a bit funny in my opinion, because the Incubus is a male spirit or demon, while the Vixen is predominantly a word for female. However, since I don't want to be confused with that other degenerate, the Canopian narrator, we're gonna stick with the Incubus name. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A few stats on this guy include It masses 30 tons, so it is a light design, a top speed of a whooping 151 km an hour, and a rounded cost of 5.3 million sea bills. The analysts of the Inner Sphere were stumped trying to determine the purpose of a second line battle mech they assigned with the codename Vixen, after citing it among the garrison forces of the clan Jade Falcon. The Incubus, as it is known among the clans, is somewhat expensive for a light garrison mech. This would confuse the spheroid observers to no end until they understood how important one-on-one -on -one duels were in clan culture and how often they occurred during board garrison troops. Thus, the Incubus is a mech that is often used in these trials, especially because it is easy to turn off the weapons to effectively balance the mech's strength with that of an augmented elemental. Despite its purpose, the Incubus does show up in some second line forces as well, and regardless of its role it is still highly regarded. Following the Clan Hell's Horse's recapture of Tokosha Mechworks Alpha, and inspired by the Clan Diamond Shark's Phoenix renovation of older designs, the Hell's Horses developed a new version of the venerable design, incorporating newer weapon technology to expand their battle mech strength. Although visually different, the core purpose of this mech remained intact, especially given the horse's elemental heavy Tuman. This visually refreshed Incubus also appealed to Clan Ice Hellion, who developed their own variant of it, examples of which fell into the hands of the clans Cloud Cobra and Star Adder, following the Hellion's ill-fated trade mission to Tannis prior to the Wars of Reaving. Part of the Inner Sphere Observer's confusion about the garrison role of the Incubus was its use of an expensive 270-rated XL engine, endosteel frame, and 5.5 tons of ferrofibrous armor. While seemingly very expensive for a mere garrison mech, this does give the Incubus impressive performance for a light mech, its profile looking aggressive despite its weight, a distinct psychological advantage for its pilots. The Incubus is armed primarily with a medium-range payload. A large pulse laser is accurate and covers a respectable range, mounted in a semi-modular rifle in the standard version's right arm. Similar to such classic designs as the Wolverine or the Battlemaster, this rifle placement makes both repair and modification of the weapon very easy and rapid. The Hell's Horse's upgraded variant replaces the rifle with a forearm mounted pod instead, but for the aforementioned reason it retains the same semi-modular nature. The arm mounted primary weapon is supported by over-the-shoulder light weapons clusters in each side or so. A couple of ER medium lasers are solid backup weapons, while four machine guns are effective against unarmored infantry. Half a ton of machine gun ammo and ten double heat sinks are more than adequate for a clan trial. The Incubus proved a very difficult problem for any inner sphere force that raided clan holdings. In the wake of Tukaid, brief shortages of Omnimax among the clan armies would cause the Incubi to take up frontline duty for many of the heavier users including the Jade Falcons and the Steel Vipers. When the warrior house Ijori raided Goat Path in 3060, the Viper Fusiliers had still not recovered to full strength and a full complement of Omnimax, but the Incubus managed to stymie the warrior house's cutting-edge Capellan battle Max. Renewed production by the Hell's Horses in the 3060s prevented the extinction of the Incubus. A bit more recently, the mech had seen a lot of use among the Hell's Horses Mongols, where its more aggressive variants often result in high attrition rates for both sides. They also provided a significant quantity of these older configurations to interested customers, 
making it indirectly appear in the Solaris 7 arenas and other gaming worlds in greater frequency. Data suggests that sufficient female mech warriors are attracted to the mech's inner sphere designation to consider leaning into this trend with some targeted marketing. I mean, who wouldn't want to bet on a hot lady mech warrior who also happens to pilot a mech called the Vixen? While they might mock the totem animals of the clans, many inner sphere mech warriors do assign an animal nickname to themselves, their fighting style, or their battle mech itself. And this was definitely an opportunity for that. Which brings us to the variants, of which there are quite a few. The Incubus II is an example of the semi-modularity offered by the Incubus' rifle, as this one replaces the pulse laser with an ERPPC. The Incubus III mounts a Streak SRM-6 and one ton of ammo in the rifle, the weight saved allowing the torso lasers to be upgraded to medium pulse lasers. The Incubus IV was a complete change to the weapon loadout with an eye to lower the cost, but it does keep the core purpose of the mech intact. Thus it mounts a heavy large laser, two medium pulse lasers, two micro pulse lasers, and two ER micro pulse lasers. As you might imagine, it can quickly build up a lot of heat in a normal combat situation, but most of the trials it is involved in does necessitate disabling many weapons so in that case it is rarely a heat problem. The Incubus V was made by the clan Ice Hellion, always prolific users of fast light mechs in general, and they copied the original design of the Incubus but decided to create their own. This mounts an ATM-6 with 2 tons of ammo, 2 ER medium lasers and 4 light machine guns. The Vixen 6 utilizes an XXL engine to allow the chassis to carry an ERPPC and talons. This one is frequently seen with the Hell's Horses and Mongol Warriors. The Incubus 7 replaces the large pulse laser with an Ultra AC2 with one ton of ammo. However, the significant loss of damage capability and endurance does make that decision questionable. The Incubus 8 is identical to the standard. It merely swaps out the large pulse laser for an LRM-20 and one ton of ammo. Both of these are mounted in the right arm. Finally, the Incubus 9 modifies the weapon loadout with 3150 ERA tech. An ER large pulse laser replaces the standard pulse laser in the right arm. Each side torso carries an ER medium pulse laser and two AP Gauss rifles. One ton of ammo is carried in the right torso, and to make room for all these upgrades, a fragile and expensive XXL engine is used. And because we're talking about the Incubus, I thought we couldn't omit talking about the Incubus 2 as well. The Incubus 2 is still a light battle mech massing at 30 tons, but a lower speed of 129 km an hour, and a higher price of 5.8 million sea bills. When the Hell's Horses would seize Inner Sphere systems in 3071, it was more out of necessity than desire. Well aware that their actions would result in a wave of counter-offensives, the Khans of the Hell's Horses planned to quickly establish military production facilities in order to keep up with their combat losses. The plan would only meet with limited success. Industrial construction was outpaced by military success and soon the Hell's Horses were on the brink of being overextended and forced to abandon their gains. Since the production facilities on their adopted homeworld of Shestreg were modest at best, the clan was forced to look for assistance in order to bolster their battle mech production. That help would come from a longtime ally, albeit one with a new face. Where Khan Ward's Clan Wolf had been steady and skilled adversaries, Khan Phelan Kell's clan wolf in exile had remained a loyal ally. And it was the exiles to whom the Hell's Horses looked to for technical and supply assistance. After intense negotiations, the two clans reached an agreement to begin joint production operations on Shestreg. While the Hell's Horses would handle the bulk of the production and design jobs, the wolf in exile's advisors and raw materials would make the efforts possible. Thus, the Incubus II, a redesign of a staple among clan second-line battle mechs, was chosen as the first target for the new industrial alliance. By that point, the Hell's Horses had been producing their own version of the Incubus tailored for proto-mech hunting. 
This would give the scientists a significant head start on the redesign. Technology acquired from Clan Wolf in Exile and reverse engineered from the Clan Jade Falcon provided many of the most advanced components. On rare occasions is a second line battle mech so balanced and well designed that it rivals even the vaunted Omni mech for overall effectiveness. The Yankebus was one of those rare occasions. It was a perfect blend of blazing speed, withering pulse lasers and sturdy armor, making it one of the most sought after light battle mechs in clan space. When updating this venerable design, the Hell's Horses actually look to drastically improve the battle mech mobility in a rugged or dense terrain. Two major changes allowed the Incubus 2 to outpace its predecessor in heavy terrain environments. The fusion engine was reduced in size slightly. While this meant a lower top speed, the loss was more than offset by the increased mobility of jump jets. In addition, a new partial wing system was fitted to the Incubus 2's vaguely LAM-like chassis. This was a natural fit as well, increasing jump capacity by more than 30%, while drastically improving mid-air maneuverability. The second major change was a complete revamp of the weapon system. The reliable pulse lasers were replaced with cutting-edge ER pulse models, and a laser-based anti-missile system was installed for pilot protection. The other weapons were shed in favor of other systems, such as the partial wing, the jump jets, and the light active probe for spotting the enemy. The trademark right arm large pulse laser was given an overhaul as well. With handheld weapon systems becoming more common on battlefields over all known space, the Hell's Horses opted to follow suit with a package of handheld weapons which allowed the Incubus 2 a limited form of omni mech like flexibility. To date, Options include a twin chemical laser package, a streak short and long range missile launcher package, a twin long range missile package, a triple barreled AP Gauss rifle, a second machine gun for anti infantry work, and a tag unit for spotting duty. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about this light mech, the Incubus, and its successor, the Incubus 2, for today. To be honest, I never actually even heard about this thing until I looked into it. But I do find its backstory quite interesting, and even a little bit funny. Oh, and I think it's a pretty powerful light mech as well. But hey, we can't all have urban mechs now, can we? Anyway, what are your thoughts on this little guy? Is it among your favorite light designs? Did you even use it or fight against it in your games? As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments below. If you found the episode informative, do consider leaving a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot, this is GDN signing out.